this is every one city, Washington, D.C. There is no other place in the world quite like the nation's capital. If you listen closely, you might even hear the bell of liberty ringing. Or the muffled guns of freedom, fired by men who died to create the panorama of beauty and justice as we see it today. Yes, this is everybody's city. Yours, mine, and the wide-eyed youngsters who know America as it is today, but have yet to learn the glory of its yesterdays and the greatness of its tomorrows. It is a city of strength, a city of beauty, and yet a city that is everybody's hometown and belongs to the world. Washington is a symbol for free men everywhere, but a symbol that lives and breathes. It lifts your heart when you see it, just as it lifted the hearts of those who built it from a dream, just as it lifts the hearts of those who work to keep it strong today. Among the many dedicated who serve their nation is your United States Senator William Langer. The story we tell in this month of May, 1958, is just an average day in the life of your senator, who for 18 years has served the people of North Dakota in the United States Senate. It is a day vastly different from those he spent as a farm boy growing up in Castleton, North Dakota. As a graduate of Columbia University in 1910, where he was valedictorian and president of his class, as Attorney General for the state of North Dakota. His duties as a two-term governor for the state of North Dakota were never as demanding as the duties as assumed as a United States Senator. His career since January 3, 1941, I think can best be described by these three words, hard, constructive work. You know, there are only 96 senators in the nation's capital. There are only 96 senators in the entire world. Senators whose duties have encompassed every facet of making a democratic form of government work in behalf of 173 million people. Senator Langer, an early riser, leaves the Capitol building after attending a breakfast prayer meeting in the Vandenberg Room. Accompanied by Senator Kefauver and Senator Dirksen, he walks across the Capitol grounds to the Senate office building. This gives them an opportunity to discuss matters pending before the Antitrust and Monopoly Subcommittee holding hearings on the lagging national economy. Arriving at his office, Senator Langer discusses the day's work with key members of his staff. These members are Mrs. Irene Martin Edwards of Fargo, North Dakota, Mrs. Ann Donahue of Bismarck, North Dakota, Mrs. Dorothy Gwynn of Castleton, North Dakota, and Miss Mary Bell Kaufman of Hebron, North Dakota. Later in the day, a progress report will be presented to the senator, and he will make his final decisions. A task in the life of any senator is his committee work. Much committee work is conducted in private or executive sessions. At other times, the press and the public have free access to these deliberations. On this particular day in the life of Senator Langer, he confers with some of the members of the important Foreign Relations Committee. They are Senator Wayne Morse of Oregon, Senator Alexander Wiley of Wisconsin, and the distinguished chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee, Senator Theodore Green. These two active senior senators are well known around Washington for their daily walks of a mile or more. Senator Langer is also the ranking Republican member of the Judiciary Committee of which he was chairman during the Republican Congress. But let's ask the present chairman of the Judiciary Committee, Senator James Eastland of Mississippi, what he thinks of Senator Langer's work with this committee. I consider Senator Langer to be one of the most able members of this committee. His wealth of experience and his vast knowledge on problems which come before us make him one of the most respected members of the United States Senate. 
it is this which has enabled him over the many years to contribute so much toward the benefit not only of the people of North Dakota, but to those of the entire nation. Senator Langer, of course, being a member of the Post Office and Civil Service Committee, is extremely interested in what happens to our postal employees and our civil service employees. And to find out his thoughts on the matter, let's now ask the present chairman of that committee, the Honorable Senator Olin D. Johnston of South Carolina. Senator Langer, for 16 years of his 18 years of service, has been one of the most energetic and effective senators on the Senate Post Office and Civil Service Committee, two of which he served as chairman. Senator Langer co-sponsored and pushed through the committee and the Senate most of the legislation improving the working conditions, pay, and pensions of the government employees. He has received numerous citations for this work. I can think of no one who has devoted more time and energy on behalf of all working people. We thought you might like to see just one example of the many awards which the able chairman of the Post Office and Civil Service Committee has mentioned. Just recently, Senator Langer received this award in recognition of his untiring efforts on behalf of the working man. This was presented to Senator Langer by 32 unions representing civil service and postal employees throughout the entire United States. Here is the United States Senate Chamber, just before the bell rings to call the senators to the opening session. It is here in this room that for 18 years, Senator Langer has represented the people of North Dakota and has done everything in his power to bring progress and recognition to our state. Senator Langer's interest in the problems of youth are well known, and here he discusses these problems just prior to the day's session of the Senate with this group of young people on the Senate steps. Later in the day, after participating in a heated Senate debate and voting on several key proposals, Senator Langer and Senator Young leave the Senate floor to meet several North Dakota constituents. After meeting with the North Dakota visitors, Senator Langer returns to his office to go over the day's work. Senator Langer reads, checks, and signs each letter that goes out of his office, and many of them contain a personal postscript. But who is this man, Senator Langer? Let's look at his extensive record. The best reference is contained in this complete filing system, just a part of which you see here. Let's read a few of these letters requesting help from Senator Langer. As an example, here's an excerpt from a letter received by Senator Langer on February 8th, 1955. I live right in the center of the Durham Triangle, and we've taken a terrific beating the past two years on this crop due to rust. And it states further, we need new seeds so that we can get our bushel acre back to normal again. We need more acreage. Signed, sincerely yours. As a result of this request for aid, Senator Langer was instrumental in the passage of Public Law 431 during the 86th Congress. This law, which raised the wheat acreage allotment for many western states, included North Dakota. And an excerpt of another letter from a serviceman who writes, The boys talk about medical attention and hospital services, especially for sicknesses directly or indirectly attributed to the war. As a result of this letter and many similar ones, Senator Langer worked diligently for the passage of the Servicemen's Readjustment Act of 1944, the act which provided medical care and assistance for our veterans. Senator Langer keeps a perpetual guest book in which appear the names of thousands of visitors who come to see the senator over the years. Here are two of the signatures of ten men from North Dakota who recently consulted with the senator when the Atomic Energy Commission curtailed uranium production in North Dakota. They wired for an appointment, which Senator Langer immediately set up. Here is the group just before they left for their appointment at the Atomic Energy Commission. As a result of Senator Langer's and their discussions in this building, an expansion of the production of uranium was allowed in North Dakota. 
A few of the many bills on which Senator Langer has labored long and hard are laws relating to the assistance of veterans. to allow North Dakota to operate free highway bridges. Disposal of agricultural commodities. Adjustments in the Railroad Retirement Act. Obtaining federal land for North Dakota schools. Protection to purchases of automobiles. Amendment of wheat marketing quotas. The protection of North Dakota water rights from the Little Missouri River and its tributaries. The redistricting of the judicial district of North Dakota. But now let's hear from the man who has contributed so greatly to North Dakota, North Dakota as we know it today. The film you have just seen depicts the normal life of the average senator day by day. Each senator represents the state of the country. And you can be certain, as long as I'm in the Senate, I will be in there battling for North Dakota and for the United States of America. With the black gold flowing and the wheat crop growing and the cattle grazing there. With its friendly people looking toward the steeple on a house of prayer. Back in his office, Senator Langer takes the last telephone call of the day. It's Mrs. Langer, and she's been calling him since about 6.30 to remind the senator that his dinner's getting cold. And so at 8 o'clock at night, after a full day's labor for the state of North Dakota, Senator Langer leaves his office for home. For those who labor in our behalf, we realize that the darkness descends too soon, but freedom and justice are not dimmed by nightfall. Instead, freedom becomes a garland of lights burning an immortal shrine, a bright sacrifice for a shining deed. For this is where justice and freedom are furnished by the memory of our honored dead, where mankind's hope will return. Let us forever keep these the symbol of the land of the free and the home of the brave, shining shields of liberty, for this is the heartbeat of a great nation, a great people striving upward in God's image for freedom and justice for all.